Most football fans dream of playing in the Premier League. For Jonathan Tompkinson, those dreams are starting to come true. A full preseason with the first team, and so far I'm still around it. Age 17, he said goodbye to his friends and family and moved across the globe. Wow, this, this could be very rough, you know? Wow, like I've just defended really well against, you know, Premier League players. We sat down to discuss how he's looking to ball out at the 2026 World Cup. There's a World Cup on the court soon. There are games in Dallas too. Being starstruck while facing Premier League stars. I grew up watching him. It's a, a quick reality check. And his most difficult moment playing for Norwich. Don't make that pass ever again or you're coming out of the team kind of thing. 600 days since we last talked. Few things have happened. Daft Punk breaking up. That boat <laughs> that got stuck in the Suez Canal. Clubhouse. Kim and Kanye divorced. Yep. Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. And the Amber Heard trial. It was, I believe, it was like early, early January 2021. You were sort of just at this point you know, breaking into the first team or, you know, very, very sort of lightly in, in the 21s and such. And now you're kind of a prominent figure and we're in the EFL trophy just a couple weeks ago, starting next to Grant Hanley. Yeah, uh, it's been not so much of a whirlwind. I think it's actually been a steady journey from, you know, the day I signed here, I was under 18s. After six months, I was playing under 23s. I think over those kind of two years, I was really just establishing myself in that team. Last year, I was captain of the team. Uh, we had a really good run, made it into the playoffs. Uh, Sadly, went out in the playoff semifinals on penalties. But since then, I've just been trying to kick on uh, and, you know, make a spot in the first team. And so I had a full preseason with the first team. Uh, and so far, I'm still around it. And I made my debut uh, this month and stuff like that. And then, you know, got another game as well uh, in the cup. But it's been a great experience. Plenty of training with the first team and just taking bits of advice from the players and stuff like that. It's been awesome. Yeah, I just see when you're talking about that first team, smile comes onto your face. Yeah, I, it's it's nice, you know. I'm, I'm getting closer to my dreams, you know. From my perspective, I'm looking at you, and you're you're playing next to Grant Hanley. You're, you're in the Norwich first team. Billy Gilmore is around there. Josh Sarge. I'm like, I watch these guys on TV, and you're you're playing right next to them. So for me, it's like wow. But for you, it's you know just guys that you're playing with, playing against, and you sort of have to normalize that feeling. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it as well, especially in games because the last thing you want to be as a defender is starstruck when you're defending um you know so if i was to come up against a premier league winger i don't want to be starstruck because that probably means i'm going to be on the back foot or i'm gonna i'm gonna lose that composure so you almost have to to kind of downplay the the fact of where you are and downplay the players you're coming up against because that gives you a little more confidence going into it so i guess you're sort of suppressing that human emotion and that totally makes sense for the the competitive 90 minutes but once that final whistle blows, are you sort of going up to these guys or, you know, shaking your hand against an opponent that you had a tough fight with and enjoyed the experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I've also had times, you know, where I finished a game and I thought, wow, like I've just defended really well against, you know, Premier League players and stuff like that or championship players. And, you know, that even goes back to when I first started training with the first team. You know, I had, a, you know, I was a little bit starstruck then and it's like, oh, I did really well. And so at the beginning, you're like, okay, like, this is really cool. I'm excited. I've just played against all these, you know, big names and stuff like that. But you also start to realize it's like, okay, well, if I'm doing well, then maybe I belong here. And that's when mm -hmm. that star st starts to kind of fade away. And that's where the confidence comes in. You're, you're defending against someone like, like Tamo Puki in, in training and you, you lock him up. Yeah. If I have like, you know, a good day of training um, and stuff like that, you know, I will be making jokes, be like, oh, you're in my pocket today. And this and that. <laughs> right now, I guess you could say like someone like Josh Sargent is in that, in that moment right now where it, he is fully confident he's, he's scoring goals yeah I think uh, a lot of hard work kind of goes on behind the scenes that people don't see uh, you know for everyone and so yeah. you know even though Josh didn't score loads of goals last season and stuff like that he, he's one of the best finishers in training and he's doing extra pieces of work for him to, to start finding his feet and I was really exciting for him and, and the team of course he's staying after training continuing to put the work in we finished training today and I think almost half if not more the team was outside you know just doing extra bits of bits of work and it's it might not even seem like organized structured work but just little games and stuff like that 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 make you better as a player you know improve your touch including you yeah yeah me and uh me and one of my teammates tony we were doing you know it was a little competitive passing game so you know we're firing the ball into each other from 15 20 yards you've got to take your touch around the pole and then aim for the mini goal um, and so it was, it started out as, okay, we're going to do 12 balls, six balls each way. And then 
you know, there's a winner of one game and it's like, oh, no, I don't want to lose. So we'll do six balls, three balls each way and stuff like that. And then it becomes three balls and, and everything like that. The competition drives each other to be better for sure. Are you placing a little bet on the line? Is it, you know, a free smoothie or something like that? Yeah, definitely. Like little bets here and there. So sometimes, you know, it's money on the line. Other times it's like, OK, if I win, you're making me a coffee this afternoon and stuff like that. So it's it's always little bits to kind of get at each other. Something that's so interesting about your persona is that you're American British and sort of that sort of all culminates in the fact that your accent is very one of a kind. It's sort of like the American that's lived there for for 15 years and has a combination of the two. Yeah. Yeah. I think I get that quite a bit. Um, My dad, you know, born and raised in England, grew up there. Um, Me born and raised in America in a household of both. And then, you know, Mm. spending summers in England as a kid and stuff like that. And then obviously I've been here for going on for going on to four years now. so I think I, my dad calls it the Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, the Mid-Atlantic. I guess you could say that the Mid-Atlantic is your, your normal speaking voice, but I, I bet if prompted, you could sort of switch like one or the other off. So go fully British, go fully American. Yeah, yeah. I think I definitely could turn turn one on for sure um, or either of them, like you're saying. Um, but I think naturally it's just kind of the way I speak. But if I wanted to force one more than the other, I could. I guess maybe... So that means you're you're probably not standing out as much as maybe someone like Josh Sargent in the locker room in terms of how you're speaking. Yeah, he he has a very very uh, American accent. He's from Missouri, so it's it's pretty easy to pin him as American. Yeah, it's so it's so cool to see just like now, of course, and the star of the moment is Brendan Aronson. But seeing that dude like speaking to the British commentators and the the whole press, and everyone is always like, oh, I forget he's American sometimes, and then he just comes out in this fully like. Yeah, dude, like it was a great game. Like me and the boys are doing really well. So <laughs> yeah, that's great to see. Yeah. I think Americans as well just have a very kind of chilled out vibe, you know, just the way the way uh, they approach press conferences and stuff like that. It's all just super relaxed, just enjoy the moment type of thing. Do you do you speak to Josh? You know him on somewhat of a personal level? Yeah, yeah, we speak quite a bit. You know a lot of people in the squad, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously I'm probably just gonna draw that American to American connection, but it is really cool to see like the, those Americans like you breaking out into the first team. You know, being from the same country gives you an instant connection because yeah. everyone, you know, as you get to higher levels, teams become more foreign. I think the easiest thing you can do is stick with uh, someone who's from where you're from because you'll have things in common automatically. So me and Josh get on very well. You know, I'm always asking him questions about, oh, what was it like going to IMG and stuff like that? Mm. And he's asking me, oh, what's Dallas like and stuff. Um, and, you know, guys like Seb Soto who were there for a bit, yep. we had a good connection too. It's, it's instant relationships because you know where you're both mm-hmm. coming from. We have the same thing as well because we have a few Scottish lads in the team, um, especially when Billy Gilmore was there too. Mm-hmm. All the Scottish guys kind of had their little group. Um, mm. But we still all, you know, intermingle and stuff like that. I think you just get drawn more to one group than the other sometimes. This season, you you are breaking in and, and being a larger part of that first team. So what sort of things has that that made you think about seeing as how you, your Premier League dreams are becoming more and more of reality each game? I think as a player, it's it's matured me a lot. Um, I think in, in academy games and, you know, team youth teams and stuff like that, uh, the games aren't very real. No stakes. Yeah, and the Premier League too and stuff like that. You know, even though we're in semifinals to get promoted, people, you know, every team, you know, plays out the back pretty much. I'd say nine out of 10 teams play out of the back as much as possible. Whereas you get into the championship and the lower leagues and even in the Premier League, um, not every team plays this, you know, pretty style of let's play 50 passes before we have a shot on goal. And as a defender, especially that hardens you quite a bit because you go from playing against a striker who's five foot eight and wants the ball at his feet to a striker who's six foot four and wants to put an elbow into your face. Mm -hmm. Um, And so defensively that hardens you. And then you also have to be a a bit more careful um, and take less risks or decide which ones are smarter. So for me playing out the back, if the pressure's coming early in the game, I've had to learn it's not always on to play out. Sometimes it's just smarter to, to kick the ball 60 yards down the field instead of you know, you play one bad pass and next thing you know, you're one nil down five minutes into a game and you're chasing it for the rest of the game. What sort of mentality switch is that like for a popular style that really Pep Guardiola has put into the, the league? But you go from that to suddenly realizing like, okay, yeah, this is much more of a the actual physical game that they talk about and they mention that the Premier League is. Well, it's a it's a little bit of a wake up call because you, you almost feel like you're invincible uh, for yeah. a bit. And, you know, I even had a little blip in the, the last cup match against Bournemouth where we're playing out the back. Because, you know, we're still a very possession-based team. 
and I've just played, you know, a, a pretty terrible pass through to the middle, and they've intercepted it, and they've got a shot on goal. I was fortunate enough to make the block, um, but you know, it's things like that. You don't really realize the pressure of the situation as well um, when you've got, you know, twenty five thousand people around you and stuff like that. They don't, they don't really care if, you know, oh, you were taught to play out and this and that. It's like don't make that pass ever again or you're coming out the team kind of thing. So it's it's a, a quick reality check and a, and a big wake-up call. Yeah, what's that like to understand that you're no longer in sort of this more smaller, a little bit less less stakes environment of the academy side to now your criticism really is, as you said, there's 25K fans in a stadium. It's on socials, it's on, on Twitter, people talking about, oh, this guy, you know, didn't pass the ball. Like, can he really be in the team anymore uh, the pressure is definitely on for sure but you have to you have to back yourself um and so you know although i made that that bad pass i think that woke me up quickly and it's like oh better better be a bit more careful with what i'm doing not necessarily you know you can't shut down because i think a big part of me is being good on the ball playing out the back um so i had to i had to kind of you know talk myself through the game all right like let's not shut down here we're going to keep playing out but we're going to play smarter passes and we're going to ease into the game do you think that confidence is a major part of how you play and that mentality that okay i I can't accomplish this it applies everywhere um so it's not just you know being confident you know passing out the back and stuff like that but it's i have to back myself in 1v1 situations it's almost having a bit of a swagger but without letting that become naivety how do you build that and on the opposite scale how do you gain that back i think a lot of it comes from so i'd say you know before you're making mistakes uh, a lot of it just comes from composure um and so it's just it's almost like having a little voice in the back of your head just like stay calm stay calm wait for him to actually move the ball i think a big thing of defending is don't necessarily look at the player's feet look at the ball when the ball moves, then go after the ball. Whereas if you get a bit too focused on the feet, that's when you start jumping at the wrong time and, and making mistakes. My agents will always you know, send me a little text before a game saying, talk yourself through the game. I think that's the biggest technique for, for staying relaxed, just talking, even though it might seem a little crazy. Um, so you'll just see players talking you know, on the screen and stuff like that. And they're really talking to themselves, not anyone else, just to keep themselves focused. Any calls from Greg? No, no, not, not yet. Um, we're, we're hoping for that later. Um, but I don't think I see that happening for a little while. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think personally, I, I just try to be realistic. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a World Cup on the card soon. And I think there's a lot of players ahead of me with more experience and I think experience weighs a lot in, in a major tournament as well. You know, I'm obviously looking to the next right. World Cup. Um, yeah. And then there's also the Olympics in Paris, which I'll be eligible for too. Qatar is probably not, maybe not yet attainable, but are you are you still being kept in the loop though, you know, for those Olympics and, and for those squads? No, not really actually, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, hmm. I don't, I'm not sure why that is or if that's because USA has had a lot of change in staff members, um, you know, kind of since the COVID period. Um, that's pretty much the last time I had any major contact with USA. And that was kind of when the under 20 World Cup was canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a little bit of contact, you know, a few months after that. I think it was March 2020, kind of speaking about potential uh, tournaments that we would be playing in. We had a, there was a big group chat as well uh, with all the players, um, you know, kind of getting to know each other to try and prepare us for that World Cup. But yeah, there hasn't really been a whole lot of contact since then. All right. Well, you're ready to get into some rapid fire questions. We had our added time segment right here. Texas or Norwich weather? Text. Mm. Yeah, Texas weather. Uh, I like the heat. I think Norwich weather is nice in the summer, but when you get to winter, it's it's pretty grim. Your dream center back partner. Ooh, that's that's a tough one. I'd probably say Sergio Ramos, actually. He's been one of my idols growing up, and I think it's always nice to, to play with a partner who's very ferocious. That way I can be the calm partner. <laughs> this definitely fits your ear or, you know, the, the calm collected guy. I think, you know, I'd try to be, you know, calm and more composed. And then it's nice if my partner's the one throwing around all the massive challenges and, you know, headbutting people and stuff like that. A soccer moment you won't forget. Making my debut, probably. That was a really, really proud moment. And I was fortunate enough that my dad was actually in the country. Um, so he was able to come to the game and he brought my granddad and my uncle along with him, which was really nice. I wasn't sure if my dad would ever be able to see my debut live in person. So it was really nice that he was there for that. Favorite city to play in? I quite like playing in London. London's really nice to play in. 
for sure. Um, and then I've also enjoyed like, you know, foreign kind of national team camps. So playing in the Netherlands was cool. Do you have a favorite stadium or atmosphere that you've been in? My favorite atmosphere that I've been around was Leeds away um, last season. Their fans are incredible. I have to give it to them. They had a, a really great atmosphere there. We we did end up losing that game pretty late, but you know the scenes were, were just a joke. Yeah, so the, the, they're said to be like some of the, the best fans. I'm in Newcastle. Yeah, I, I would argue that Leeds probably have the best atmosphere in the Premier League. Liverpool is good as well up into Anfield, but just the way Ellen Road was, you know, so loud for the entire mm. game was was incredible. A luxury you can't live without. My car. I, I drive everywhere, even if it's, you know, two minutes. If, if it's a five minute walk, I'm probably driving. What are you whipping? Uh, I drive a Mercedes E-Class. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. A favorite f- hobby outside of football? My favorite hobbies, yeah. I, I do enjoy a bit of golf, although I'm not very good. More recently, I've started getting more into my fashion and stuff like that. Shoes, mm. uh, different shirts and jeans and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a fun game for sure. Yeah. A key piece of advice you've picked up? Just to relax, honestly. Um, and it's, you know, don't make big occasions out of things. And, and like I said earlier, just talk yourself through things. I think that's been the biggest one for me because that, that helps you do everything that you're good at. One last question before we get off. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years? Uh, that'll make me 25. Yeah, I hope to see myself, you know, playing in the Premier League week in, week out. Um, you know, consistently starting somewhere. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's where I would like to be in five years, playing in the Premier League um, and also playing for, for my country. Um, I'd like to really, you know, be an established professional by that time um, and not just, you know, chasing my dreams, but living it. Is there a significance in the number 45 that you now wear? It's just kind of my, my academy number. My dream number one day would be to be four, but 45 thrives now. Rip that five off after the game. Yeah, exactly.